as you may or may not know, <clears throat> uh, All Saints is going to have a new assistant pastor. It's Father David Wynn. He will start on August 1st. And by the end of the year, he will take over for Father uh, Nicholas Sorensen, uh, who is retiring by January 1st. Also, um, the St. Nicholas Church in Pinellas Park is getting Father Nathaniel Tremblay um, uh, to take over by August 1st for Father Michael Massu. And uh, Hiram, Father Herman Lassiter, will start on August 1st uh, to take over for Father Andrew Moore, who is retiring as well. So we have three new priests as of August 1st at All Saints, Saints Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, Hiram, Georgia, and uh, Pinellas Park, which is near Tampa, Florida. And they're all three graduates, uh, recently graduated, he, now in May, from uh, uh, two from St. Vladimir's and one from Holy Cross in Boston. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Sunday, the 24th of May. It's the Sunday of the blind man. Um, I hope you had a wonderful uh, Divine Liturgy online. Uh, some of you uh, have had Divine Liturgy in person. Some churches I gave a uh, uh, permission to start up to 25% of the uh, nave capacity. Um, a few of you have asked how am I feeling. Well, last, last, uh, not last week, the week before, I was uh, not feeling well. I had achy body and so on. That is over. But unfortunately for the past week, uh, there has been lingering effects. Um, I've been having no energy, uh, very, very tired the whole week. I'm hoping to recover from that uh, very soon. Uh, it's basically no energy. Uh, I can't uh, uh, move effectively and so on. Uh, hopefully, it'll go away. Uh, I think it was the flu or something like that that has uh, lingering effects. But every day I'm better than the day before. Thank God. Okay, anyway, I hope you've had a wonderful and glorious Sunday. It's Sunday of the Blind Man. We alluded to that um, reading a few weeks ago. Um, the prevalent knowledge or prevalent feeling in those days that when somebody is um, sick, it's because he has sinned or his parents have sinned, um, as was asked of Jesus in today's Gospel reading. Uh, why is he blind? Is he the one who sinned or is it his parents? And Christ said, neither is true. He sinned because we want, as God, we want to manifest our healing power in Him. So, by means of a physical healing, Christ attempted to mend what was hidden. By means of a tangible result, Christ sought to cure what is elusive. What does that mean? Is his goal really to heal his blindness? Or is it bigger than that? Well, there is, in this story today, there is physical blindness as well as spiritual blindness. So when we say, by means of a physical healing, he wanted to heal the eyes of the blind man so that he can heal what is hidden, the lack of faith in Christ, the Son of God. He wanted to show a tangible result in the man seeing physically so that those who did not believe in Christ may be healed of their spiritual infirmity. 
by healing his eyes, he wanted to heal the lack of faith. He wanted to open the gates of life to everybody. So it is more than meets the eye in today's gospel reading. It's not just the physical healing. Those back then did not want to believe in him. So he tried to use something physical, something seen, so that they may believe. So that they may enter paradise with him. To that effect, Nicholas Cabasilus, I've been quoting this book, and I've been quoting him quite a while for quite a while. It's the book of the life in Christ. He describes it this way. The paragraph or the uh, chapter, chapter 9, it's how Christ opens to us the gates of life. The gates of life or the gates of the mystery, mysteries, are far more august than, and beneficial than the gates of paradise. Wow. That sounds um, shocking. The latter, which means the gates of paradise, will not be open to anyone who has not first entered through the gates of the mysteries. But these were opened when the gates of paradise had been closed. So the gates of paradise were closed when Adam and Eve sinned and fell out of favor with God they were cast out of paradise and that's when the gates of the mysteries were open God as we talked about in another uh, live streaming did not give up on Adam and Eve and their descendants and he kept sending, sending them um, prophets and messengers throughout the Old Testament until he had to send his only begotten son. And through him, he created new gates in front of the gates of paradise. If the gates of paradise are here, then the gates of the mysteries are preceding them. And we can't enter the gates of paradise unless we go through the gates of the mysteries. The latter, the gates of paradise, were able to let out those who were within, Adam and Eve, that is, while the former, the gates of the mysteries, only lead inside and let no one out. It was possible to shut the gates of paradise, and so they were shut. In the case of the mysteries, the curtain and the dividing wall were entirely destroyed and taken away. It is impossible to raise a barrier anew and for the gates to be closed again and these worlds to be divided from each other by a wall. So effectively, what Christ did created new gates to allow us to go through these gates, the gates of mysteries, the mysteries of Christ, which means the sacraments. And once we enter through those, we might be able to enter through the gates of paradise. So basically, if we don't enter through the gates of the mysteries, there is no way to enter the gates of paradise. Jesus said, I am the way. If you want to get to the Father, you have to get through me. I am the way. There is no other way. And that way is through the mysteries of the church. Is Christ himself. There is no other way to paradise and to God the Father.
So as Nicholas Cabasilas articulated here, the way is the way of the mysteries. More precisely, the Eucharist, confession, of course, baptism, and all the other mysteries, all, all, the, all the other um, uh, mysteries and all the other um, uh, sacraments. Sorry, a senior moment. <laughs> all the other sacraments. So it is important, especially now, that the churches are opening slowly but surely to make an appointment with your spiritual father to go to confession, to make an appointment to receive communion, because only through those gates we can go to the gates of paradise. It's a very, very simple but profound message that was given to us this morning in the Gospel reading. Jesus was trying to convince everybody around him through the physical healing of the blind man to believe in him and his father who sent him and in the Holy Spirit so that they, might, they may be able to go into the gates of paradise. So by, by means of a physical healing, Christ attempted to mend what was hidden, the spiritual blindness, by means of a tangible, tangible result, being able to see. Christ sought to cure what is elusive, the spiritual blindness. So today's Gospel reading has a lot more to understand than just the physical healing of the man, especially when he healed him on the Sabbath. If you have any questions, please type them up. While you're doing that, I would like to remind you that the uh, VLC, the Virtual Life Conference, registration has been on for about a week and we have uh, over 163 registrations so far. We need everybody to register. All the, all the clergy need to register. It is not optional for the clergy. They need to register. Uh, everybody else need to register. Um, I have sent a special message to all the clergy uh, with the VLC document, register the uh, uh, registration form in addition to the detailed schedule of the VLC to send to all their parishioners. If you have not received it, please call your priest. If somebody else you know has not known about it or registered for it, please advise them, advise them to go to their priests. It's very important to register. It's going to be wonderful, even though it's not face-to-face. But it will be wonderful. There are so many events in it that everybody can participate in. There is the kids club. There is um, uh, events for the teens, for the young adults, for the Ethiopian women, Ethiopian men. There is a talent show. There is a uh, vorational um, event that's virtual orations. We need all the teens to participate in that. We sent a flyer to all the teens and to all the Dowsey channels. We sent also a uh, flyer about the talent show. There will be a talent show uh, to the whole diocese and to the teens. Please encourage your teens to participate in the talent show and in the um, vorational uh, event. It's virtual oratorical. It's between three and five minutes. All teens are invited to participate in both. And actually the talent, the talent show, everybody is invited to do that, to participate in that. It's going to be wonderful. 
In addition to the VLC, we just started publicizing the CST at home, Camp St. Thecla at home. The registration form has been published uh, throughout all the Domsey channels and on Instagram for the teens. And also there is a promotional video that was done by the um, committee. As you may or may not know, I had appointed two committees to take care of the camp. Uh, there is a finance committee that takes care of all the finances. Uh, it is uh, Father uh, uh, McCool, Alexander McCool, uh, Elias Abu Ghazali, and Pam Kelly, and myself. Uh, Elias is account payable, Pam is account receivable. And there is another committee for the camp, it's the CST Planning and Admin Committee. It is uh, Father Alex, of course. It is also Suena Kime and uh, Mara Schuler and myself. Uh, and this committee has been working very, very hard uh, to uh, plan for the CST at home. Actually, also we have a seminarian. His name is Ted Worthmuller from uh, Pensacola. Pam Kelly is from Pensacola as well. So we've been working very hard to plan for CST at home. Please have your teens register for that um, and uh, participate. It's going to be also very, very well, very wonderful. It is very well planned. We did have a poll before we started planning for it, and we are tailoring the planning of the uh, CST at home according to the feedback we received in the poll. All right, God bless you. Let me check out the uh, questions that you have uh, typed in. Okay. Father Joseph Abouid. What book has that topic of the gates of the mysteries that you are using? Of Nicholas Cabasila's title. It's called The Life in Christ. The Life in Christ, Nicholas Cabasilas. It is a wonderful, wonderful book. Michael Bockleg. Are there any special instructions for choirs when singing at our parishes? Right now, there are no choirs um, uh, allowed to, to sing in parishes. It's only two chanters on either side of the uh, solea. Um, it has been determined by the medical field that even when we speak, there are droplets that come out of our mouth. So when there are choirs, a lot of droplets will come out and may infect other people uh, because there are asymptomatic uh, people who have the virus but don't know it and don't have any symptoms. So no choirs right now, only two uh, chanters on either side of the uh, solea. Okay, let's see. We are still under the under no congressional congregational singing at church, correct? Yes, absolutely. Only the two chanters for now. God willing, soon all of that will go away. By the way, on Friday at 4 p.m., the um, the bishops had a meeting and uh, we decided that we keep the previous directives valid until further notice. Uh, we reviewed uh, feedback from all the dioceses and we reviewed uh, with the Metropolitan, of course, and uh, we decided that the directives that were sent earlier this, this month continue to be valid. Uh, however, there are new CDC guidelines for houses of worship that we need to abide with. Please look them up and abide by them. Our service is streamed only on band now. Honestly, YouTube makes it easier since we are not squinting at a phone. Well, you know that you can mirror your phone to your uh, TV. 
you don't have to squint at, at your phone. Uh, there's a technology that's called mirroring if you have a Samsung phone and a Samsung computer. But you can mirror what's on the screen of your phone to your uh, TV. But if you don't have a Samsung technology, you have other technologies, even Samsung, you can use Apple TV to mirror what's on your phone to your TV. All services from many, many parishes are being streamed, um, not only on band by St. Elizabeth. So the one from St. Elizabeth is being done so that um, uh, everybody can log in to that um, because it's the family of Father John Oliver who is doing all of that. Uh, nobody else is exposed to anybody else. That's why I chose that church with the family of Father John Oliver. His daughters are, uh, and his wife are the choir, uh, or the chanters, that is, and, um, and his sons are the altar servers. So, Georgie, you don't have to squint at your phone. You can uh, look into the technology that mirrors the phone into your uh, TV. Uh, Father Joseph, uh, follow-up question. If we use this understanding of Nicholas Cabasilas, does does he mean anything of the does he mean anything of those who don't partake of the mysteries? Well, right now we all can partake of the mysteries. Um, not partaking of the mysteries is not going through the gates. in order to go to the gates of paradise. But right now, all the gates have been opened, the gates of mysteries. You can go to your church and you can make an appointment with your priest and receive communion if you are unable to go on Sunday. So everybody can receive communion, everybody can go to confession. And if you do your confession or spiritual uh, discussion with your spiritual father over the phone, then you can go to the, your local priest and receive absolution. Uh, the confession or spiritual talk over the phone cannot grant absolution. So you would have to go to the local priest to receive absolution. Okay, wonderful. It looks like there are no other questions. I'll give you another minute if you have any question or you're typing it and you haven't finished. I'll give you another minute uh, to, um, uh, to type it up. So basically, the idea of the mysteries are the gates before the gates. The gates before the gates of paradise. And we cannot go to paradise without the gates of the mysteries, the gates of uh, the Eucharist, uh, confession, and so on. So we are trying to get there by going through the gates of the mysteries. May God bless you. I don't see any more questions. May God bless you and keep you. Please go make appointments with your priests and uh, go receive communion if you can't go on Sundays. And also, you can make appointments to do your confession or call your spiritual father over the phone and then receive your absolution from a local priest. God bless you. And may God be with you. Register for the VLC. Register for the uh, CST at home. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.